And we have our next guest on the phone with us. She is vice president of the Drama Desk. Also, she's the current co-host of a show called Two on the Isle, a cable television show co-hosted by Charles Gross. You can see it Thursdays on Time Warner and RCN Cable, and also they sometimes take the episodes and cut them up and show certain segments on YouTube, so you can look for it there, Two on the Isle. And she is also a correspondent for TheaterMania.com. We spoke to Brian Scott Lipton just before, and she writes about... Um, films that have some background in the stage, like movie uh, plays that became movies or uh, stage actors who are involved in film. Anyway, that is just a long way around saying welcome to Leslie Hoban Blake. Leslie, welcome well, thank, to the Tony thank Show. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be talking to you again. And you, of course, once were on two on the aisle as well. I don't know that you said that, but I didn't hear you say that with all of that introduction. So. Oh, well, yeah, I was a frequent um, guest. On the a show, frequent they, guest, yes. yeah, because uh, I it was, suddenly wound up as a co-host. I thought I was a frequent guest, and then one day I was a co-host. <laughs> oh, cool! Well, ooh. pleasure to so, have you with us on this particular show as as a guest. And so, let's jump right to the categories with okay. uh, with Leslie Hoban Blake, and well, let's start with set design because you're going to be doing set design of a play, and okay. the nominees are the Mother Effer with a Hat, the set by Todd Rosenthal. War Horse, Ray Smith, Jerusalem by somebody named Ults. There's just the one word there, Ults. And the I Merchant of Venice. I think it's more than one person. But it, oh, it is a group. Okay. I don't think so. I went Googling for it, and um, I think Ults is actually just the, the person's oh, name. Oh, okay. All right. My uh, misunderstanding. And, and oddly enough, this is Ults's first Broadway appearance since 1982 when he designed it was good. the show it was really Good. good. Yes, I went and did, I did the same Google you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, mine was IM, uh, IBDB, the Internet Broadway Database. And then let's not forget also The Merchant of Venice for Mark Wendland. Leslie Hoban Blake, your thoughts on set design of a play? Okay. Well, you and I have talked many times about this in the past, David, and we both are working practitioners in the theater as well as uh, critics of the theater. So we both know how important set design is is to a show and we I very strongly feel that very often is said that that's the New York siren in the background <laughs> that you know I'm really calling in New York um, <laughs> we, we, we know that that it's really important and sometimes it's also a character in the play that's how important the set design can be and in several of the cases here the, the set design is a character in War Horse for example the way that Ray Smith and Ray is a woman by the way um, designed this war play was to break down the set into an upper and a lower level and have it, uh, a continuous uh, animated uh, ride across what was going on in, in the time period and what was going on in the boy's mind and other things. So it took us to all sorts of other places while we were in the play. And so that's the kind of thing that a, that a, that a, a set design can do. Now, that being said, mm -hmm. Jerusalem is an extraordinary recreation of a, of a woodland glen with, a, with a, a, a camper sitting in the middle of it and a bunch of, you know, weirdo people, uh, outcasts going around getting drunk and stoned and whatnot in that setting. But it's the most extraordinary recreation of a woodland glen I've ever seen on, on stage. It really looks real. Um, the, the mother effer with a hat is three separate sets. And it, it, because what it does is it, it's the background for the three main sets of characters uh, who are, are involved in the play. And so each one really has to be different, and each one has to somehow show what that character is like, and it does that very well. Merchant of Venice, which mm -hmm. I saw both in the park and then wondered, God, can they put this in a theater? Because in the park it was an expansive metal uh, uh circle that changed and rotated and became this and became that, but it was basically the same framework changing, not unlike the way Oliver changed, but here it was hmm. to, be, to be Venice at the time period. And it, it actually was better in the theater. It deepened. The set was so much a part of what was going on. And if there was a misstep, if you didn't misstep exactly in the right place, you were going to fall in water or you were going to fall off the damn thing. So you really had to be part of it. So I hope I've explained that, yeah. that visually for what this, this category is and how difficult it was to try to make a decision among these. But if I were going to, to have to, if I were actually handing out that award tomorrow, I would want it to be a tie. I know that's, a, I know that's an 
I know that's a bad thing to do. But I would so much like to see... Um, no, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. This is not where I wanted to be a tie at all. Forgive me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong thing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting nervous about this. I really, really, really want to see War Horse get the set design. Um, even though the, the puppet horses are not necessarily set they were they were worked on together with the set designer and it's such an you know they, it, they had to absolutely fit together and it was a beautiful beautiful uh, combination so i think warhorse should really walk away with the set design even though i absolutely adored the merchant of venice um i think it's warhorse and do you think warhorse will win excuse me i think we'll, i think warhorse will win i think no, I, I don't think anything is going to be able to beat metal horses this year i really don't <laughs> metal puppet horses metal puppet horses yes Okay, Leslie Hoban Blake weighing in on set design of a play for uh, tomorrow night's Tony Awards. And now we move on to a big category. Best, not, not that set design isn't big, but, uh, you know, the, the, on scales of things, since we're yeah. talking about scaled metal horses, we move to revival of a play. And the, uh, <clears throat> the nominees are Arcadia, The Importance of Being Earnest, The Merchant of Venice, and Larry Kramer's The Normal Heart. Leslie? I, and I have never understood why Shakespeare winds up in the revival category. It seems to me that, you know, <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's a revival, but, you know, it's the only 400-year-old revival in the, in, in the bunch, and that always, that always, it always tickles me to see that up against um, anything else. So, okay, um, I saw Arcadia originally, and I slept through it. So the fact that this one held my interest and was so extraordinarily exciting to me, anyway, no. I don't, everybody doesn't agree with that. Uh, I sure don't. It an absolute must in that category. Uh, the Merchant of Venice, I already mentioned, I saw it both in the park and on stage, and it was the best. I have seen The Merchant of Venice at least seven times in the last 15 years. I even went to London to see uh, Henry Goodman do it, and um, I've seen uh, Pacino do it, and I've seen Dustin Hoffman do it. So I've seen a lot of Merchant of Venice's, Merchant of Venice's um, and I saw Olivier do it. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, performance, direction, the, um, the whole play in this particular case gives a brand new feeling to what the play is about. It gives us an, an insight that I've never had before uh, in the way in which Dan Sullivan, the director, ends it. The Normal Heart, I bought a ticket to The Normal Heart when it was a reading. I thought, this will never get anywhere. I want to see this. Joe Mantello back on stage for the first time in 18 years and all of these actors, and Joel Ray was directing it. And it was a reading, and Glenn Close read the part that now Ellen Barkin is playing on Broadway. And I was excited just that the seeing the reading made me cry. So the fact that the whole thing went to Broadway was the most extraordinary bit of Daryl Roth and producing that ever happened. The thing I don't understand is what the hell is Merchant is, is um, importance of being earnest doing in this category. You, they don't have to put four plays in a category. They've only put two musicals in the, in, in, in the musical category. They could have left this out. This was the most pedestrian importance of being earnest I can remember seeing. It was lovely to see Brian Bedford in a dress. It really was. <laughs> but he directed it himself. He directed it the way very often British and Canadian, he worked a lot in the Canadian Shaw Festival and up in, in, in that area, the Shakespeare Festival. Um, what they do is they surround themselves with slightly lesser actors so that they get to be the star. It's exactly what happened when Hamlet came over with uh, Jude Law. It was, it was just not people up to his caliber uh, around him to make sure, in case you didn't realize who the star of the show was supposed to be. And it was slow. There's, there's nothing worse than Oscar Wilde uh, witticisms and epigrams being said slowly. They've got to go by faster than you can think because the next one is coming. So I was, uh, that doesn't even belong in this category as far oh, as I'm concerned. Wow. Um, I, I don't know if I, I quite agree. I, mean, I, I think it kind of belongs in the category. I'm, I'm kind of sick as most of us are, of importances of being earnest, because, you know, there's never a moment when someone isn't doing that damn play. I liked uh, Bedford, but I have to say that the show was stolen by, um, is it Algernon or the other? I thought one of the young men was, was really, really good. Fa Faustino, what's his name? Fausto Santini? Well, maybe you're, you're not, rem but I thought he was terrific. I, I really thought, wow, he really yeah, perked up. I, I I remember Quentin Crisp did it off Broadway yeah. 20, 30 years ago, however long ago it's been. Um, it's, it, it's been done by men in London often. Uh, there's a whole a pantomime uh, history there of men playing women's roles. So, you know, that's, that didn't, I just don't know what it's doing in this category. It is not of Tony caliber as far as I'm concerned. Now, this is where I want the tie. This is where I'm wimping out. Because uh -huh. between The Merchant of Venice, which was my all-time, yes, this is going to be it from the minute I saw it both times until I walked into Normal Heart. 
and I, and and normal heart rips your heart out of your body. Yeah. And it's just it's a different. It's apples and oranges. There's no way to have these two up against each other. So and it has happened before. There have been ties, and I really want to see both of those win. I just I cannot choose between them. I'm sorry. And, and do, you have, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on which you think will win? What has the edge? Oh, I, I'm pretty sure normal heart is going to win. That's the talk on the on the Rialto, as it were, is that normal heart's going to do it. I mean, it's not because I know everybody connected. You know, I mean, director-wise, Dan Sullivan is an old acquaintance, and, and of course, George C. George C. Wolf. I mean, it can, can do no wrong in my book. Um, but I just, I just don't think it's a fair competition. I know that's stupid because competition is not fair to start with. <laughs> Ever. But this, I know, this is just one time when I don't want to have to make that choice. Well, I, if I had to throw my vote in, yeah. I guess I would throw it in for normal heart. But I, I, I just don't want to see either one of them lose. Leslie Hoban Blake weighing in on best revival of a playbook.